welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to discuss what it is to be a Luciferian, what are the qualities of a Luciferian, and um, I was thinking about it because a lot of people ask me questions, and um, honestly, it's not, it's not just because you work with Lucifer <laughs> and it's not just because you work with with daemons and um, spirits but it's actually the way that you think and the way that you perceive this reality and the um, ambition that you have behind your own personal true will and your um, your it's really your will how your your will is what um, separates you different from everybody else but I mean I could I could just talk from my own experiences but I thought I would do something a little bit different and um, kind of talk about um, it in the way and the format that Michael Ford um, does it and he does an excellent job if anybody does not know who Michael Ford is you can go check him out on his um, YouTube channel and you can go and purchase his books on Amazon. But uh, he breaks it down really uh, simple and he talks about the 11 points of power. That way, um, if you're ever confronted with anybody that is not of this path, such as, you know, Christians or just anybody that, you know how they, uh, they're very confrontational at least you'll have something to like a guide and you'll be able to um yeah you'll just be able to explain it better so i was gonna just do some brief brief things to explain the basics and the, the fundamentals and the ideology of luciferian luciferianism um from his book you know it's just it's just better it's just better than me having to really explain it from my point of view because well I mean I could but this is just this is just better so basically okay so like he explains it really simple here okay Luciferian Luciferian uh, philosophy is different from the abstract concept of the masses of uh, the masses have on the occult a strong rational understanding and defined steps to applying and validating the results must be present. Traditional Satanism inspires a, um, inspires self-interest and self-satisfaction of indulgence in life and all that it entails. However, Luciferian philosophy rises the rises and carries on from the form of satanic principles towards liberation, illumination, and apotheosis. So what, he, what he's saying here is like, um, Luciferianism comes from the concepts of, of, of sat uh, Satanism, but it's, m it's different because in Satanism, it's more about indulging in everything and never feeling kind of guilty about it um and and um this is more about um control in your indulgements <laughs> and balance um not to overindulge because we know where that can end up for my as myself um using drugs and alcohol i started off as just indulging but it turned into more because I was indulging too much and my addiction took hold and it ruined my fucking life. Well, it didn't ruin my life. Oh, and that's the other thing. I'm going to try extremely hard not to swear because I was noticing I swear a lot. So I'm going to try to um, eliminate my potty mouth and sound more edumacated. <laughs> I winked. <laughs> okay, so... The, the, the three principles of Luciferian, uh, Luciferianism, Luciferian is, oh my gosh, Luciferianism is liberation, illumination, apotheosis. So I, I'm going to break it down. Um, I'm going to break it down the way he breaks it down. 
these are like the, the building blocks. And um, it, it, it's the way, it's the way that it's, it, it's the pyramid. It's called, it's actually, um, it's actually the, the triad of the morning star. So, you know, liberation is the first one overcoming restrictive beliefs or demon, uh, dogmatic religious thought to take accountability of your own life. So this here, like he, he breaks it down here. So this here is uh, liberation, um, the way that he, 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 you know, he designed it, um, liberation. So liberation is like uh, f questioning your belief system, especially if you're raised in a religious household and um, your parents are pushing down their religion on you. Are you one of those people that are easily, were you, are, were you one of those people that were like, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, or were you one of those kids that questioned, well, that didn't make any sense, that doesn't make any sense. I was like that, you know? I did not understand the concept of Noah's Ark. I questioned that. I did not understand the concept of why, um, this God would create humanity and then we make a decision and then we're punished for making a decision when we had freedom of choice. Clearly we didn't have freedom of choice if we made a choice and we're punished for it. That I knew at a young age, very young. I questioned it all. Not only that, I didn't understand the concept of hell and burning in hell and um, praying to God. I, it did not resonate with me at all. So that's, that's the, the start of liberation. Now, this could happen in any stage of your life, okay? Any stage of your life, you can start questioning. However, most of us question it at, a, at an early age. Um, so that, that's liberation, is liberating yourself from, from, the brain, from, from the brainwashing and questioning and, you know, really questioning everything you have to if you're a smart human being you have to question every goddamn thing okay i swore i'm not gonna swear you have to question everything people do even in even on this path even on our path i question everything i do not take things for face value I question everybody and their motives. I question everything. I, I question the spirits I work with. I, you know, until I until I get that full trust of them, then then there's a, there's that relationship. But they have to prove themselves to me as I have to prove myself to them, which is only understandable. You know, I'm not I'm not some little puppet where I'm just going to be like yeah, I'll do anything for you. Do, 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 do. No, I was I was I'm not like that. That's not who I am. So the second. Um, part of the triad is illumination seeking knowledge or insight to begin actualization of your goals in life includes material and spiritual self-determined desires to to plan and to achieve so here's here's illumination okay as you see he has like the eye of Horus breaking chains um, this is like basically the 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 fire, the fire, the black fire that was, I don't even know if I'm probably saying this true. I don't know, but this is just how it is to me. But like Prometheus with holding the fire from the gods, which is like the black flame, the knowledge. Um, so illumination is like when you actually, um, when you seek for those answers and you start to receive those answers, you start to like put pieces together and it, it empowers you and it, um, you know, you don't have that confusion. You're like, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, mm -hmm, I'm on, to, I'm on to something here. I'm on to something here. It doesn't mean you stop seeking. You never stop seeking. If you stop seeking for answers, you stop growing. We never stop learning. And once you think you've learned everything, and if you learned everything, pfft, you're, you, mm, I don't know. Um, and it's and it's it's putting this this system into your m mundane life and to achieve goals. If you do not have goals and you do not set goals and achieve your goals, you will not succeed in anything. How do you know what it is to succeed if you have not failed, you know? And failure 
is not um, is not getting stuff. Failure, to me, is when you give up. That's failure. That's true failure. There is nothing in this world that you cannot do. Nothing. You can do it. You might not be the you not might not be um, the best at it, or you might not be um, socially more. Um, successful than anybody else but you can have, you could obtain a, a success of self fulfillment when you set goals from your desires that you desire and um, achieve them there's nothing there's nothing more fulfilling than achieving your goals as a small child um, I did not fulfill my desires and that made me la um, have a lack of, con um, of control and success within myself and then the lack of confidence and self-worth and self-love went down because I wasn't achieving my goals because I wasn't really setting them. However, I was um, an excellent athlete at a young age. I would get myself involved in track and field and I was just really good. I was a really good athlete. Um, my parents didn't have that much money to put me in activities, but I would put myself in them in school. And I was racing, I was, I was in grade two and I was racing grade fours and fives and I was coming in third. And sometime I came, sometimes I've, I came in second place, I never come in first place, but I was a fast fucking runner and I pushed myself. I have pictures, I, my dad would take pictures of me running and I remember the feeling of me running against other older people and actually passing them. That gave me confidence, that gave me true um, success within myself that I could do something that that I set for myself and push myself but that those are just some examples so desires can be anything you know there's nothing wrong with wanting to have money and a lot of it there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want that's what you want go fucking get it don't don't care if people say money changes you that's up to you that's not true Money doesn't change you, okay? Greed changes you. If you worship money and you make m money your God and you don't, if you make money work for you rather than money, if you work for money and money doesn't work for you, that's when you fucking change. When your morals and your values are surrounded by money, there's nothing, if you're, if, if there's, <laughs> if you're afraid of having money, then it's probably not a good idea for you to seek it. Um, you have to be confident within yourself that you will not become a greedy person. And you can tell if you're a greedy person by the way that you give to, to others, the way that you hold on to money, the way um, you share. And I'm not talking about holding on to money like savings. You, you, we should be saving our money more than spending it. But that's another thing. It's about the way you see material things and how you use it for the better of yourself and your family and your loved ones. Um, you know, but if you're afraid of having money, that's probably because you're afraid within your, yourself that you would change and become greedy straight up, you know? Um, and a lot of times it does happen because money is power and power can, you can you get away with, every, you can get away with being a dick, you know, because it doesn't matter if nobody likes you, you can, you can go out and buy yourself a car. You can go and try to self fulfill yourself with these material things, but that will lead you down to through misery. But some people, for some people, they don't care. They rather have, have that. Me? Yes, I want, I want to have a lot of things in this, in this life, you know, but I'm not hung up on it. I, I, I won't, I can survive and I'm very resourceful and I make the best of what I have. That's just, that's the person that I am, you know. I'm not a gold digger. I never seeked out men who had money, even though I probably should have. <laughs> I was actually the opposite. Um, I really, I was really attracted to, to, to just the opposite of that, you know, but okay. Um, now, the last um, part of the, the morning start is apotheosis. Um, and I'm sure you guys have heard this word before, apotheosis. So apotheosis, which is how he did this um, diagram. It's very powerful, very strong, right? You can see the process of all three of them, how they changed but became one. They, they're all, um, yeah, anyways. So I'll read you what, what he, his explanation of apotheosis is. 
by liberation from restrictive beliefs and obtaining illumination towards sharpening your life in accordance with your will. Apotheosis, becoming a God, is a continual state of achieving and acquiring personal power in your life. You know, that, that, that kind of just explains, explains it all. Um, you know, you hear all these magicians out there, and you guys probably watch a lot of videos, and a lot of black magicians talk about becoming, becoming a god, god. We don't mean becoming a god as, as a god to be worshipped, but yes, worship does come in when you do become a god. When you become a god is when it doesn't matter, and you are not affected by anybody's thoughts towards you that you will pursue your dreams no matter what, and you will get the results you want no matter what. Magic can only do so much for you. You are magic yourself. You have to do the work. You have to go out there in, the, in this real world and put in the work like entrepreneurs do. They bust their ass. Like these musicians, they don't just make a song in one night. They, they work all day, all night. Um, now, you know, a, a lot of people hate on like, this is, a little bit different, a little off topic, but a lot of people hate on like um, Cardi B. If you really watch Cardi B, she's a god, and I'll, I'm going to explain to you why. She's a goddess. She embodies her whole will, her personality, her her talent, her looks, everything about her is godly. And she is worshipped because of that. And she's hated because of that. Um, these, these people who make money off of entertainment, most of them, especially in the music industry, and can, the ones that can create um, music videos, they can rearrange the view of them into how they see themselves in their minds and create that in, their, in this reality. It's fucking amazing through technology, through makeup, through um, their own personal power, you know. It's their personal power and their will that has gotten them where they are. Yes, you have to have a, 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 a team around you that markets you, that supports you, that invests in you. But once again, it's that person's energy that attracts those people that, to believe in them. No matter what anybody says, it's that individual's ability to attract the right people to make them into the people they want to be viewed as in society you know it's magic it's spells it's glamour it's it all without even them knowing that they're practicing it um do you it, it's strange it's strange because you 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 i wonder Am I doing all this to be like that? Like, I'm sure we all wonder what it's like to be famous and rich, you know? What it's like to be worshipped as gods in that form. Is that what you want? Is that what I would want? Um, yes and no. You know, yes and no. I would love that power. I would love that. The fame? The fame? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want the fame. Do I want all that fakeness and all those fake people? I don't know, you know? I don't know what it's like to have it, so I couldn't tell you if I would want it. Um, does it look like it's fun? Fuck yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's fun traveling around the world, um, you know, investing in your looks, invest, uh, yeah, you know, it's that's all great, but I bet you Cardi B, um, I've, I've watched her sometimes, and when you're a personality like her, you have a downfall, you know, you have it. It's, it, it's like me, I'm a very outgoing, happy person, but I have my downfalls and um, I can get depressed and sad and lonely and isolated very quickly. It's like with all, it's like uh, with, uh, what's his name? Um, that actor that killed himself. Um, oh my gosh, he was that comedian. He played Miss Doubtfire. He was the fun, he was so funny. Oh, I forget his name. But anyways, he committed suicide from depression. And a lot of people would be like, how was he depressed? He never projected that. But yeah, there's there's a balance, right? If you're totally happy and projecting crazy happiness, like Jim Carrey. But Jim Carrey's different. Jim Carrey's different because Jim Carrey is spiritual, you know? 
and he's wise and he's he's he set himself free he was he was stuck in it he was stuck in the fame and he he got what he wanted but it but he realized there was more to life you know there was more to life and he seeked the answers he went and seek the answers and now he's all you know spirit spiritual and he's he, you know he, he's there he understands what this matrix is um and people now in the entertainment business are trying to make him look like he's fucking crazy when really he's just enlightened <laughs> it's it's the funniest thing he's just really enlightened and he likes to be by himself and he meditates and he paints and he works with spirits and you know there's a lot more to jim carrey than than they he will reveal but he does let you reveal some stuff when he goes into um uh the red carpets and he's like looking at everybody he's like i don't really exist you know it's the truth we don't really really exist we're just energy um, so, I'm going to break that. I'm going to break this down. Oh, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to, I'm going to do this book with you guys, actually, you know, I'm going to break it down. Um, so I went through the, 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 the Morningstar Pyramid. But um, there are 11 points of power, okay? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna briefly go through the 11 points of power of Luf Luciferi Luciferism. Sorry, I'm trying to be uh, serious and professional here, but um, okay, so, so this is, uh, I'm gonna do my best to um, explain it the way I see it, okay? So the first point, Lucifer represents the light of intellect, wisdom, and power unique to unique to the individual with the courage to ascend to this res, uh, responsibility so lucifer is the illuminator he is um he has many names um many many names <sighs> he when you first start working with with lucifer he's the one that will um remove the lies and and that cloud of not knowing through path workings and through connecting other spirits he is the guide he is the one um his energy is both male and female he's both light and dark um you know some people say he's enki some um yeah so the Greeks call the, he is Prometheus, you know, the, that's a better description of him. But I do have a book of um, all the masks of Lucifer, you know, and some people say he is. Uh, there's so many connections and interconnections with these spirits. It's really hard to put them in just one category. It's almost like he's just spread out and all the gods and goddesses are all connected and they're all just aspects of each other. Um, but there are some that are different. It's, it's confusing sometimes. It really is when you really, really think about it. But he is the initiator, you know, in Luciferianism. And he will bring knowledge to you. You know, if you're, if you're the seeker and you're seeking knowledge, he will provide the knowledge to you through books, through meeting people, through groups, um, through you going through YouTube videos and finding videos that will start to open up your mind and set you free from the chains of society and the, the lies of this matrix, truly. Um, point two, the symbol of the adversary is that of the self-liberator and spiritual rebel who inspires self-evolution. So the adversary is the one who goes against um, the, um, how can I explain it? Uh, the adversary is, the, the, is, when you have the adversarial spirit in you, you do not believe in, in, in enslavement. You love yourself so much that you will not allow yourself to be a slave to no God, no man, nothing. You take responsibility for your own actions. You don't blame it on anybody else. You take responsibility. Um, you don't, you don't worship anything else. Yes. 
working with spirits is kind of a form of worship, but it's more of giving honor and respect and love. You know, like, it's like when you're in love with your partner, you love them so much in a way you worship them, but it's a, it's, it's a beautiful type of worship. It's not, it's a trust, it's a trust. You know, it's a relationship. Number three, point three. Lucifer represents the balance, the torch bearer, bearer of Venus, the light bringer as the morning star and the night bringer, the bringer as the evening star. So yeah, he balances um, light and dark. Um, the evening star in Samaria, there was an, um, there's, it's what's strange. Anana was Venus and Atar was the evening star. Could that be Lucifer? You know, um, they're both a lot of, there's, there's a lot of qualities, feminine, dark, male, female, light bearer, you know, illuminator, evening star, morning star. So basically point three is representing the balance, the balance, the balance. Point four, the adversary symbolizes the spark of consciousness, which questions everything manifesting the ind individualistic path, which with accountability only to self. So when you are working the adversarial path, you spark, you have the spark of consciousness that questions everything. Exactly what I said, you question everything. Point five, the fall of Lucifer symbolizes the liberation of the mind from, from the slave mentality. Just like I said, Lucifer will free you from the slave mentality, but you have to have that spark. He, this is it for, for everybody, you know that. There's, there's a difference, but people can't, it's for the people who, who aren't so arrogant and ignorant. I don't get it. I don't get it personally because I've never been like that. So I can't be in someone else's situation and say um, what it's like to be completely blind. I always knew something was up and I was always that. I always had the adversarial blood in me, always. Um, so yeah, um, slave mentality and the courage to explore and master the darkness within. One may not offer the, illumin the illumination of the morning star without the wisdom of the darkness within. So that, I'm only going to do five points right now because I don't want this video to be too long and then I'll do the rest of the, the 11 points and some other stuff. But um, he does explain them better in, in, in the book. But for point five for me, um, so exploring your darkness is within is all of the shame, all of the guilt, all of your cardinal desires to explore them and to find out really why you want them and to be okay with it as long as you're not hurting anybody and, and as long as you know, you're not hurting animals and children and you're not putting physical will on somebody, you know, your physical will on somebody. But uh, it's, it's merging and becoming your dark and light self, your good, I'm gonna use these words, good and bad, your, your, your bad self and your good self, whatever, and becoming um, that whole being that you are. When people see me now, you, you see me differently than I was five years ago. I didn't speak the same. I was very, very different, but that was my darkness. That was my, my, and I was indulging in every type of desire to the point where it took control of me. It took control of me and it had a, it, my, I had no control. This this energy that you see now was way down, down there. It wasn't, wasn't active. It wasn't, my darkness was active. But I purged it and I went through it and I became it and I got rid of that <sighs> version. Not get, okay, not get rid of that version. I do not serve that version of me anymore, but it's always with me. My darkness is always with me. And it could, at any time, take over again. 
if I lost the will to survive and if I if I lost my will to succeed in this version of myself because the person that I am today I have no I have no stress <laughs> I have no stress because I'm not creating stress for myself I'm not creating problems I take care of myself I know what's good for me now and uh, I worship myself I honor myself I love myself and I won't put up with shit anymore. I put up with a lot of stuff because I didn't value myself. So I will continue to read the rest of the 11 points of power and more on um, this book to help people who are just beginning th th this path. But it's um, you'll get lots of knowledge in this book. Um, he does a really good job. Everything you need to know, everything, for starters. You know, I, I wish I had this book years ago. I just, I had to find my own path. But it validates everything that I believed. So even though I didn't have this book, when I got, the, when I got this and I started to understand that I was a Luciferian, I had more, I had more um, um, confirmation, you know, because I never read any of this stuff and I already knew it, so clearly I, confirmation so i hope you guys uh enjoyed me trying to explain this to you guys uh, yeah goodbye